That's right, CES 2014 has now finished. The team has just returned from Las Vegas, and even though we were expecting more from this show, just like pretty much every time we go to Vegas, we get that same feeling of less mobile, more everything else. Obviously, there were some products that we did like from the show, so I'm Jaime Rivera. This is Pocket Now, and these are the top five devices that we actually liked at CES 2014. Number five is the ZTE Nubia 5, and no, you're not in the wrong video. This is actually a phone that we did like, and you know, it's interesting. The whole team is surprised that we actually liked the ZTE phone for the first time, and the reason why is because even though the Nubia 5 wasn't a bad phone, it wasn't a great phone, and what they did was pretty much fix everything we didn't like about the Nubia 5. We get a better camera, optical limit stabilization, great photo quality. We also get an interesting UI that's really unique. We get a Snapdragon 800 processor, great display, so stay tuned, the Nubia 5 hopefully will be an interesting phone for 2014 and hopefully it will come to the United States. Number four is the Sony Xperia Z1 Compact. For the longest time, we have wanted a phone that is not gigantic and it has flagship specifications. And we finally get it. The Z1 Compact is this phone and hopefully it will come to the United States very soon. It brings pretty much everything that we see on the Z1, but it improves the display and the whole viewing angle thing. We get a waterproof phone. Sony's UI is really interesting. They're doing a great job with software updates. And this is just pointing to be one of the great phones of 2014. Let's just hope their implementation is good. And let's just hope they do have more than one carrier, if at least one that picks up this phone, because it will be really interesting to match this up against the iPhone, being the other non-jumbo phone with interesting specs. Number three are Samsung tablets for the first time ever. For the first time ever, we're actually saying that we liked Samsung tablets. And yeah, the design wasn't really inspired at all, but we do like that faux leather stitching at the back because it does feel good in the hand. We do like how light these tablets are. We do like the options of tablets that we get. And we do love the fact that all these tablets have great resolution displays. That 8.4 inch tablet has an amazing 2K display that it doesn't really need. So it's really great to see that finally an OEM is figuring out what we want for tablets, at least when it comes to the display, when it comes to the way we want it to feel in the hand. And again, even though these aren't the greatest tablets in the world, they're a step in the right direction. Next up, we have to see how well they perform. Number two is not really a device, but more actually something that still deserves praise. It's Samsung's new UI. And again, you are not in the wrong video. We've hated TouchWiz for the longest of times. And finally, we can say that there is a TouchWiz that we actually like. The reason why is because we always complain about the fact that tablets are just bloated smartphones. And Samsung finally figured out a way to take advantage of that whole display with multi-window support, with that whole ambience thing in the home screen, with the whole cards thing, whatever you want to call it. Floating windows, everything. Samsung has just given tablets what they deserve. They deserve more than just a couple of app icons on the display. They don't have to behave like smartphones. And this is something that we've dogged OEMs for the longest time. So it's great to see that finally one company does it differently and that finally they're doing it without copying anybody else. You could say that it does look like Windows and it kind of does. I just feel that it's better because it's not just so stale. So stay tuned. We do want to see that new UI coming to future Samsung phones and tablets, and hopefully they can figure out how to make it to not bog down the device as well. And the top number one device that we liked for CES 2014 was the Pebble Steel. We were expecting a lot of wearables at CES 2014, and we ended up with a lot of mock-ups that were trashy and bad and just not working. They were mock-ups, again, not really devices. Pebble was the only company that really brought us something compelling that Pebble Steel is actually a fashion statement. The reason why it took me so long to buy the Pebble originally was because it looked like a toy, but this one really looks like the watch that any businessman would like to buy. And even though some people find it a little expensive at $250, I find it to be compelling, honestly. I think that it's a good price point for the extra function functionality that you get. And for the price that you would pay for a real fashionable watch, I think that it's adequately priced. But again, that's just my opinion. But anyways, that leads me to the question of this top five. Which was your favorite device from CES 2014? Again, my particular case, the Pebble Steel, is the only device that I saw at this event that I am willing to buy like now, and I will buy it. But leave us a comment down below. What do you think? That's it for our top five. Thank you very much for watching. Make sure you follow us on social media and subscribe to our YouTube channel as well. You can also follow me on Twitter, Jaime underscore Rivera. Please give this video a thumbs up if you like what you saw. I am Jaime Rivera. Thank you very much for watching. We will see you on the next top five.